Grandpa Dave, guess what? We need to talk about my first years of school. Not good years. Eh, they weren't bad either. They didn't kick me out. Stay tuned. <laughs> somebody to beat me up or whatever, you know. Well, my day come that I had to go to bum 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 kindergarten. Now, I was scared spitless. I don't want to go to kindergarten. I don't want to go to school. I actually kind of like being home, you know. I got into watching soap operas with my grandma, you know. Who's going to watch soap operas with grandma? I, I had to stay home. No, no, I had to go. I remember the the uh, time that mom took me up there so they can kind of like show me what I'm, what's going to happen. And, you know, I, she practically had to drag me half the way. And she dragged me into this room. And there's all this cool stuff. It was a big room. I mean, you come in the middle of this big room. Toys. Toys in there. And the lady said, well, this is what you'll do. You'll be in the early class, and you'll come in, and you'll bring your little nap thing. See, back then, they did nap time. And you would take to school a, a mat, and it'd fold out, and you would lay down on your mat, and you'd nap. And usually what they'd do is they would bring in a carton of milk and some crackers, or something like that. You need a carton of milk and crackers, and then you have to go take your nap. Okay, that wasn't, I didn't excel in that part because at that point in time, I wasn't really into the nap scene, but you know, now, <laughs> heck yeah, I'll take a nap. But you know, I was just, then you, you took a nap. Well, I seen the toys, you know, you'll have play time, you'll play with toys, and you'll play with kids, and it'll be really fun, and you get to do all these neat things, and. There'll be sing-alongs. I, I don't sing along. I don't really, I don't sing. I mean, come on, lady. Do I look like Bing Crosby? I'm five. No, I, well, okay. I guess I can handle that. And you'll be going home around noon, so you'll come to school and you'll only be here for a few hours and then you get to go home. Okay, that sounds pretty good. My sisters and brother, they were gone all day long. They got the short end of the stick. I got the whole yard. This is good. I like school. Toys. Well, my first day I was there. Yeah, I remember that. Lots of kids I didn't know. Lots of kids. Well, we got to, I made a couple of friends and we started having some fun playing with toys and of course, you know, the, the treats, the little snacks. Sometimes they were graham crackers. Sometimes they were something else. And always a little thing of milk. You're supposed to drink all your milk. At the end of the nap time, everybody take a nap. And then you'd lay down and she'd turn the lights down and she'd go sit in the corner for, I don't know how long we laid there. It seemed like 45 hours, but you know, I guess it was like 10, 15 minutes. I don't think I ever napped. At least I'm not sure I did. But I was excited when the school year ended that I was able to take that mat home. Now the one thing about school I didn't like, and I think a lot of people can relate, was that you had to have these little cards, and you were required to go to the dentist twice a year. The dentist, you know, <laughs> dentist. And he'd have to sign the card, and you'd have to give it to your teacher, and if you didn't go, she would remind you that you're supposed to go to the dentist. Oh, I hated that dentist. Now over in Logan, next to the old skating rink, was my dentist. He was, I think, Dr. Jekyll's brother. He, he, he scared me. 
little, little office, you know, it had two rooms, with uh, torture rooms, you know. You go in, you sit down, read a magazine and stuff, a little, little window where the receptionist, and she was a sweet lady, she was nice, and the only good thing about going there was she was nice. And you'd go in there and you'd sit down in the chair, and he'd come in, and right here on the side was a little bowl with a little squirty thing, you know, a little drinky bowl, drinky thing, you know, uh, water, water fountain, water fountain. And he would say, all right, open up. And he'd open up and he'd look at it, oh, mm, ooh, oh, ooh, ooh. Well, you got three. Oh, great, I got three. Yeah. I think we'll do them all at once, and you know what, they're just little ones, so I don't think you need a shot. I don't? Well, that's good. I didn't like the shot anyway. No, I don't need a shot. Now, his his drills, now they're all really kind of fast and everything. They were belts. And you would watch the belts move as he'd come in here and had a very distinct sound. You know? And he'd start going. And then he'd stop, squirt some water, you know, and then, and then he'd say, go over and spit. And he'd take a drink. And then, you know, the long, I took the longest time possible to suck the water out of that fountain and spit it. Because I was going back. And then, man, the pain would just kind of start to hurt. And I'd start to move. He says, hold still. He tried to hold still, and he'd just, drink. Okay, that's the end of the first drill. Then the pitch in the machine changes. It goes real slow. And he's got this thing, and it's got a ball on it, probably about the size of this, it felt like. And he'd go in there and go, and smoke would come out of your mouth. Smoke, it'd smell like burning death. And you'd scram, and he'd say, hold still, slam you in the leg. Then you hold still. You know, you can walk on your butt. You can. You can walk on your butt. And I, uh, to torture time, kind of torture, and then say, rinse. You go in and rinse, and I take forever. Come up and, mm -hmm. then it'd be all done, and he'd put these little things in there, and he'd twist it until you could hear bones cracking. <laughs> and then, He'd go in with the stuff and he'd come out and push it in there and then push it in there and then push it in there and turn the thing on and go dee, 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 dee. anyway, there's all kinds of weird noises. And then he put this sucker thing in there. And it would suck all your spit out. This kinda of sounds like somebody else's thing, but it's similar torture. Anyway, he'd do that and then you're done six months you're back again and amazing enough he found four more two more one more then he decided well i think this one's deep i think we're going to give you a shot needles that long plugs that thing in there just still like that squirting stuff in there then he'd leave for a while because it has to take effect evidently it takes time and then you start to that sound like this and he cut it and he cocked it and says, okay, I'll hit up. He goes, ha. Ah. And then he works on you in the same routine. Because now you got a shot, he doesn't think he can feel anything, so he goes all, all, all out. You know. Yeah, so that was the worst part of school. Every grade, twice a year, got to go to the dentist, bring the card. David, you don't have your card. Yeah, right. I'll get back to you. Anyway, that that, that was that that was kind of not fun. I, I, not cool at all, you know. But you know, the school was fun, and I made it through the grades. I got to the second grade. The second grade was a little different than kindergarten. Uh, first grade was too, because now instead of getting to go home, I had to stay the whole dang day and then go home or you know do whatever. But second grade. I got this little bug or something, I don't know, but I got sick. And I I don't know what it was, but evidently I missed a lot of work, a lot of school, a lot of work, a lot of school. Same thing. Anyway, uh, I missed a lot of school. And it was determined 
that they had a choice. They could they could send me to the third grade and help tutor me up and catch up with the other kids or hold me back to second grade again. Well, I was the kid that flunked second grade for a long time. It's really, really irritating because I went to school with one group of kids and I went to scouts with another group of kids because I had older kids. My old friends were a year or older in school, but we were all the same age because I flunked second grade. Well, we worked up into the, all the different grades and worked up into the other grades and worked up. I always got that thing. You know, and I was always getting stuff. I was always in trouble with the teachers. I oh, you brought that. What'd you bring that for? I'm going to take it away from you. You can have it back at the year's end. That was always exciting, too, though, because at year's end, that you would get all the stuff that was taken from you. I ended up having to bring a sack or something because there was so much stuff that I'd have to, I couldn't carry it all. I'd forgotten half of it I had taken away from me. Then we made it to the big sixth grade, man. All my friends were now in junior high, and I was still in grade school, sixth grade. Uh, but that's a good, cool teacher, you know. That's when I first started to learn a little bit about something called homework. Now, I didn't like homework. Homework's stupid. You know why? i got to go to that dumb school, and I have to sit in that stupid chair and do what you tell me to do. Not to mention, we go into the gym and you make me dance with some girl and I gotta hold her hand? Really? Yeah, they made us learn to dance and square dance and stuff with other girls. I got this one girl, a blonde girl. She was different. She seemed to like me. And I had to hold her hand when we do these things and clammy hands. Anyway, uh, I hated that. Well, now this teacher took pity upon me and I got to be what they called a junior policeman. Now, that was cool. Because you got to wear this thing and it was a little, round, a little belt around your head and went up here and you had this little badge on there and you got this little book. A little long, one of those little long skinny books and you'd sit out with a pitch, pencil. And I always got out of class because you know they had lunch one, lunch two. And I, I got to take and sit out both, uh, both of them and I got to take the one lunch. but. While my class was still in class, I got to sit out there and, hey, quit running. Hey, you skip the stair. Go back up and go up and down the stair ten times. Things like that. Writing people's names down for doing bad stuff. Real, real, real on. I was really on it. I was really on it. I actually took a little bit too much advantage of it, but it was kind of fun to have that power. But you go on through the other grades, and, you know, the other grades are kind of self-explanatory. I'm constantly in trouble. But, you know, as always, as I got into the other grades, I found I didn't particularly want to be there. And I'm a very ingenuitive kid. And I found that the only thing you needed to do to stay home from school in my family was to have a temperature. Now, that's kind of difficult when you're not sick. But I did, I covered that, and I, and I think rather ingeniously I did. Now, if you go into our, our, our old house, Dad, the kitchen table was here, and there was a counter went across here, and then the sink, and Mom, the stove, and Mom worked over there. We had a chair over there in the corner, and then four chairs around the table. You know, one for my little sister, myself, Mom, and Dad, because all my other siblings had got married and left. And right under the counter, it went back about that far, there was a, a, a ledge. You couldn't see it. So what I do is mom kept the uh, thermometer in the cupboard. And I walk up, oh, I don't feel good. And I grab the thermometer and I go sit in that chair. Now, dad would look up, kind of go, mom say, all right, just sit there and, and I'll take it out when it's time. So what I'd do is I'd sit there and Dad would be sitting there and he'd be reading a paper or something like that. And Mom would be busy. What they didn't know is I had gone to the store and I had purchased a thermometer just like the one that they had. And I had taken said thermometer. I learned how to read thermometers when I was young. I was, I was good at it. And I gave that thermometer a temperature of 101. I did. And 
and I had it right up under that seam. So my parents would be doing, I'd be looking for their proper tone, and I grabbed the one, hold it in my hand, and then I'm looking, switch it out, and then push the other one there. And all of a sudden, I had a temperature of 101. And guess what? I didn't go to school. Now, you have to be careful when you do that. You do it too much. Well, it's kind of like a, a certain movie about a kid that cut school, you know, because fake sick. It's very true. A lot of his, what he says is true. You don't want to go to the doctor's office. Well, I, I don't mind needles. You know, you can give me a shot. I don't really care. But, you know, I, I, I did go to the doctor once or twice. Amazingly, my temperature was gone when I got there. But anyway, that's one of my tricks. Uh, anybody that wants to know how to do that, you just get the temperature lukewarm from the water and just put it in there for a second or two and pull it out and look at it. And then you you got to do it this way. You can't hold it on there. If you hold it on there, you're going to have a temperature of 940. And that probably means you're dead. So you got to be careful. Just kind of FYI, uh, you know, put that away somewhere. Don't tell your parents you learned this or where you learned it from. But anyway, I played that game. And I played the the hooky stuff, you know, I cut school and I did dumb stuff like that. Well, yeah, yeah, I cut school one time for about three days, four days, and I was hiding in a certain place, and Mom come home and the door opened, she yelled, David! Okay, she knows I'm here. David! Okay. Fess up. You been cutting school? Well, yeah. Get in the car. Principal wants to talk to you. Dang. What is he going to do? Maybe hold me after school for hours? Make me do all the homework I missed? So I went up there and she went in with me and sat down in the principal's office and said, So, I see you don't like coming to school. You're cutting school. Well, yeah. Why don't you like being here? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. We can't have this kind of thing and we are going to suspend you for three days. Huh? We're going to suspend you for three days. What's that entail? That means you can't come to school for three days. No, I'm trying really hard to see the bad in this, but I'm thinking this is some kind of a punishment so I have to pretend. But i got to hide the glee in my face. Okay, now here's the deal. I, I never understood that. I don't want to be there, number one, so I cut school. So to punish me for not going to school because I don't want to go to school, you're going to tell me I can't be at school for three days. Okay, good enough. I'll do it. So I spent three days working at the shop which I like, I'd rather be working at the shop. Actually, I'd rather go and have my molars pulled. I'd rather go and have root canals without painkiller than go to school at that time. Man, I didn't like school. Well, it comes a time for me to uh, graduate. I shouldn't have. Oh, no. I shouldn't have graduated. You know why? I shouldn't have graduated. I didn't have the credit. But you know what? They graduated me. You know why? Because they didn't want me around no more. If they kept me there, they'd have had to deal with me for another year. No, they wanted me gone. So, I left school. That's the way it was. Had a lot of good times and a lot of bad times at school. Remember my times about talking about secret agent years? Oh yeah, yeah in grade school we did that too. We'd come up with a little club, called ourselves Stardust. Yeah. We were after the agents of quack. We'd buy these little cap guns and we'd hide them in our... You know, back then you could take a cap gun to school, nobody cared. Take a pocket knife to school, nobody cared. We just didn't do the things people do nowadays, you know? Anyway, we'd grab those cap guns and we'd creep around school and we'd look for those quack agents and shoot them and stuff like that. And there was a couple kids that picked up on it and they decided to become quack. So it got kind of fun there for that school year. It was kind of fun. That's probably the best part of school there. The lunches were pretty good too, especially the pizza. Ooh, I like the pizza. Anyway, 
those were my school years. You know, there's probably more stories about school I'll come up later, but that's just kind of off the top of my head. I need to talk a little bit about my car and the things I did in my car and dating. But, you know, there's a few more stories about the old house that I need to cross and a few other things like that that we'll, we'll get into. But tell you what, uh, we'll call this an, an episode and we'll, we'll have you come back for another one later. Catch you later. Grandpa Dave here with a little wisdom for you. Now you're probably wondering right now how a guy like me got so smart. Well, the answer is with all these stories and things I did when I was younger. To be old and wise, you first have to be young and stupid. When you're young and stupid, you learn. Then you become wise. The stove's hot, don't touch it. Well, you gotta touch it once. That's how you become wise. Later. <laughs>